Okay, fam. Make sure you call a loved one, a family member. Tell them, here we go again. All I'm asking you for, pleading with you for, is give me 40 minutes of your time. 45 max. And I promise you, I believe God has something to say to you that will benefit you. So call a loved one. Get yourself something to write with. Do not trust your brain to hold or retain all of the information that may come to you. I just believe God, that God will give so much that you shouldn't try to um, hold that and retain that on your own because the devil will steal it. And it may be just that thing you need to get free. The devil get away from you. So to the family, thank God for you being here with us. Thank God for you taking time from your busy schedule. I pray that you can just stay focused. So do your part. Move the distractions, whatsoever they may be. This is God's time, wholly set aside for him. So what we're going to do is not let God have to compete against anybody or anything. Okay? God don't need to, have, need to compete against anybody or anything. So we got about we got about a minute and a half. A minute and a half. So, so call a loved one. Call a friend. To all of the saints that are here, good evening. Bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, your clock, yo, your... your it, if your clock or your watch is moving a little faster than mine, guys, according to mine, I'm, I'm moving by mine, okay? So, I guess then it may be, according to my watch, give me 40 to 45 minutes of my time because yours may be a little faster. So, with that said, with that said, we're rolling, Saints. We're getting ready to pull this train out the station. And what do we do? We're going to go into spiritual battle. So, what we want to do is walk out of the natural into the spiritual. And again, what is prayer? Prayer is just a earthly request for heavenly wisdom. So let's go get some heavenly wisdom before we attack the word of God today, if you will. Let's go before the throne of grace. Father, we honor you, we bless you, and we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us once again to come before the throne of grace. Lord, we just want to say thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that we have faced through this day because regardless of how rough it was, you got us through it. So, Lord, we just want to tell you, Lord, we thank you. We love you for protecting us and for keeping us. Help us, Lord, to reflect back on this day thus far and say, what have we done for kingdom's sake? Even if that is with ourselves, by keeping our minds on you, for your word state, there is where peace lies. So, Lord, whatsoever that we can do outwardly for anyone to help them with, Lord God, this walk in Christ, or inwardly to keep our heart and mind focused that we may grow in you. Father, help us to continue fighting the spiritual battle, not backing down nor backing up, giving in or giving out. Help us to plant our feet, Lord, and continue to trust you every step of the way. So to each and every last one of your saints right now, I plead the blood of Jesus for them all. To those that are here, right here with us, Lord, I pray that they are able to let go everything that is taking place today. Help us that we may stay focused on what you have to say to us right now, that we may be able to apply this to our life, Lord, to root out anything that the enemy tried to bring in, or, Lord God, grow to the level that you have us to be. To the saints, Lord God, that will not be here, well, well the saints, Lord, that will be a little late getting here to us, I pray, Lord, that you bless them, protect them, watch over them, keep them, Lord, that they may get to a safe place where they're able, Lord, to hear the message without distractions, Lord. I pray, Father, and to those that will not be here with us for whatever reason, I plead the blood of Jesus that they may be able to view this message or listen to this message at a later date and time, that they may be able to get every bit of the nutrients that you have in it for them. Now, Lord, let me say this before we close out. A couple of things. To those that may be listening to us for the first time or just coming on board, and they may not even be ones that know you or don't believe in you, or those, Lord God, that are totally confused about you. Help your word that it may be simple. That it may be, Lord God, so simple that even the least among us will be able to understand. Help us, Lord God, that we do not get into flashy, but that we get into, Lord God, making sure that the word of God is made simple. For we do know when a thing is made simple, it's easy for a person to achieve it. But when a thing is made complicated, people walk away from it. So, Lord, do not let me complicate your word in any way, form, or fashion. But let me, Lord God, be able to keep it simple, that we the saints will not be intimidated, that we may put forth our best effort to do that which is pleasing in your sight. Now, with that said, Lord, I give you the power of attorney over the message right now. Deal with any demonic spirit that raises itself up with the purpose of causing confusion or breaking down, Lord God, um, the barriers in any way, form, or fashion to keep the children of God's mind 
focused on you that we may grow. Now for doing this for us, Lord, we're so careful to give your name to praise. For this is a prayer we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father, for it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. If you're in agreement with that prayer, saints, say amen. And again, we know amen to be. I'm putting my stamp of approval on that which was just said or done. So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to go back to where we were, which was Acts, the 27th chapter. And we're going to try to close the 27th chapter out tonight. I'm going to do my best to close the 27th chapter out tonight. But it's hard, guys, when I'm trying to grab this information and give you some. So we're going to try to close out the 27th chapter so we can... Um, um, hit the final book of Acts and getting ready to walk into Rome. So this is what we're going to do, guys. So um, as we touched last week, again, our ever popular slingshot effect. Yes, we're going to touch what we did last week. We're going to then go into new information. Let's just go ahead and touch on this. But we started last week on Acts 27 and, and verse number 32. That's where we were last week. And we read down to like 30, 36. And we'll touch on that and then we'll move with new stuff. So pretty fast. Okay, it says, then the soldier cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was come on, Paul besought them to take some meat, saying, this is the 14th day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health, for there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broke it, he began to eat. Broken it, he had begun to eat. Then were all, then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. So what we were beginning to find out last week, that's a couple of things that we were beginning to touch on, guys, with your walk with God. And we were just just briefly touching on a few things. And we said, guys, in verse number um, verse number 32, we were just letting you know you have to cut off some people. And that's what the Roman soldier was doing, because some people were detrimental to your life. And so the Roman soldier had just gotten word from Paul, the centurion and the soldiers got word from Paul that the same people that put them in that mess was now trying to escape and leave them on board. And so Paul let them know, except these abide in the ship with us, we all going to die. And so therefore the Roman soldier said, uh, the centurion gave word, I'm not playing no games. He cut the boat off, therefore you can't be tempted. So sometimes you got to just cut people off where they can't tempt you to get into a mess. Birds of the same feather all flock together. So sometimes you, what you got to do is when your mama or your spouse or your significant other tell you, you don't need to hang with that person. They're not just trying to control your life. They see a danger. And sometimes you're too close to a situation. You got a blind spot. You have a blind spot. And so what you need to do is listen to others. On my job, Saints, what we have, we're moving some very big equipment. And when we're moving that equipment, we have to have what we call a spotter. Now, a spotter is somebody that can see something you can't see. And although you can't see the spotter, you got to trust the spotter's voice. And sometimes one may um, yell out, hello. Oh. And so what I do is stop. Or I may yell out to them, no move. And they'll stop. So the point is the spotter can see something that I cannot see that can save me from great damage. And so that's what Paul was saying. You got to cut off some things, guys. When the Roman soldiers cut the boat off, you can't even be tempted now about um, sneaking away and getting in the boat because the boat is gone. So some things you just got to move it, completely move it, that you are not tempted in any way, form or fashion. OK, and then he was saying um, you can um you can see that these guys were all in because of what they was going through. Sometimes what you go through is going to harden you or it's going to break you. The saying goes, what don't kill you makes you stronger. So these people, because of everything that they was looking at, there was no way, in, no way, form or fashion that they can leave. They were all in whatever it took in order to get free. That's what we're going to do. So these guys were fasting. It was going through. They hadn't eaten in 14 days. And so they was laying this thing down. And Paul was beginning to give them the word in, in this situation. No, you talk me into it. We're in it together. And that's a just a quick um, side note to that. Let me say something. And I don't know why God is sending me this way. But to whosoever you may be out there, I want you to listen real clear, okay? Anytime you're going to make a major decision, 
you please discuss it with your spouse or your significant other. And if y'all agree together to do this thing and it goes south, you are not to put it on the other person. See, what Paul did is you had some that was there. They caused this problem and then they try to get away. Well, no, if you cause the problem, take ownership of it. Be responsible for the problem you caused. And so what Paul was beginning to point out in these things is these guys were all in. They were fasting, whatever it take. And Paul had to give them word. Paul had to give them word. Tell these guys, y'all got to eat something. Y'all, it's been 14 days. These guys were so locked in that they was not moving until they saw Paul. They saw him give thanks to God. And so that said to them, okay, God and his approval on what he is doing here. He gave thanks to God and prayed because they were so locked in and fearful that they may do something to, in, in some way to offend God, that they may die. And so they're not eating nothing. I tell you what, you eat it first. And so when they saw Paul eat it, and then they watched, they said, well, okay, then, maybe then, okay, maybe we can eat something now. So Paul admonished them, y'all need to definitely need to eat a thing and eat something. It's been 14 days. You need your strength. We've been battling this sea for a while. Some of us have been in darkness and been fighting. Some of you are fighting depression. Some of you are fighting oppression. Some of you are fighting all of these things. And it's been a long time. But don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season, you're going to reap. Meaning you're going to win if you don't quit. So God never said it was going to be easy, but he did say you can handle it. And so that 14 days that they have been out there, don't know day from night because the sun was not shining. The ship being tossed and turned, they still chose to believe God and not God so much, but they watched the man of God. And that's another thing that we hit on, hit on last week is you need to understand that you are the light of the world. And some people are not going to see God. You're the only image of God that they're going to see. Now, what image are you projecting? So what people are saying is they don't know about prayer. They are so afraid with this religious thing. They don't know how to pray. So they'll trust you to pray. Or they're going to watch you pray. Or they're going to watch you how you handle a crisis. Don't tell me your God can do everything, but yet he can't keep you from nothing. And so what you're going to have to do is trust God every step of the way. Because there are people that don't know God, but they know you. And the image that they're going to get of God is what they get from you. Now, the word of God says unto you, know ye not that ye are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any of us defile the temple of God, God is going to destroy us for God's temple is holy. Which temple are you? So what they're saying is when people look at you, we should have a God type consciousness, meaning the mind that God has. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. How do you become equal with God? Well, you know God's word and you just say what God say, say. If you say what God say, say, you will be on the same wavelength with God because that's what he said. That's what he wanted. So that's what I'm going to agree with. And so those are the things that we touched with last, last week, guys, and begin to go through some things and begin to look at that. So we're going to advance with new information, guys. But it was um, the last thing that we um, dealt with. Um, we were just pretty much in verse number um, 36. It says, it says, then, um, then were they all of good cheer and they also took some meat. There are people that are in a crisis situation. Their lives are heavy on them. And so what they're saying to you is this. They're watching you. When the person is, is in tumult or turmoil, they're watching their lives and everything that is going through and they don't know if they're coming or going. They need a stabling point. They need a stabling point. And once you get a stabling point, you're able to lock in on that. You can balance yourself out. Well, you sometimes is that stabling point to a person. When their life is in a crisis and they don't know if they're coming or going, they will look at you. They will lock in on you. Because um, if you flip out or freak out, they show nothing to lose it. So you need to be stable and steady in the word of God. Last thing I leave with you guys will be moving forward. Here is something that is a, if you would, a life hack. For all believers. The more you study in the word of God. The less mess. Can get in you. So many of us. Struggle. With certain things in life. Whatsoever that thing is. You're struggling with. You are struggling. Because it was able to get in. And the way it was able to get in. Is because you was not full. But if we are full with the word. Nothing else can get in. But so many of us. Junk is in us. Because we're not full with the word. You're full of gossip. You're full of this or that. 
You need to be full of the word. So the life hack is every day, if you are beginning to start your day with just reading a passage of scripture, maybe two verses, and think on that all day long. I promise you, if you think on that, the devil don't have no room to get in. Amen? So, with that said, we now move to new information. That's enough to carry us to wherever we're going from here. I mean, but nevertheless, we now move with new information to try to close this thing off. Okay, in verse number 37, it says, And we were in all in the ship two, 200, three score, and 16 souls. And so, that lets you know there's a massive number of people that was in that ship. See, you, this was no little tugboat they was in. They were in to the tune of um, 200, three score, and 16 souls. Now, let's do some math, y'all. know I love to do math with y'all that we may be able, the saints may be able to understand in the word of God. Now, a score, 200, we know what 200 is. Okay, three score. So if we want to know how much is three score, we got to know what a score is. A score is 20. Now, if it's three score, 20 times 3 is what? Okay, you got it. 20 times 3 is 60. Now, 60 plus 16 is what? You may say, I'm not sure. Okay, say 60 times 10. 70. 70 plus 6. 76. So we got two, 276 souls were in the ship. Well, let me ask you guys something. If any of you guys ever been on a cruise, um, there's a lot of people that be on the ship I heard, again, I heard, there's a lot of people that be on the ship. But here's your thing. Here's the thing. It's just not people on the ship. You have to have people to man the ship. And so not only that, but people got to eat. So the thing that you have is there is not only people on the ship, cargo on the ship, but food is also on the ship. The ship got to also have things um, for protection. We know that um, they had other lifeboats on the ship. So a lot of these things come on the ship that lets you know it was not a small boat, the point that I was trying to make. Not a small boat, a big boat. And all of these lives are at stake. Look, there may be a lot more people watching you than you know. There may be a lot more people have an eye on you than you know. So you have to be careful, saints. You have to be very careful in every way, form or fashion, which way you are steering this boat. Because people are watching you and you may mislead a person. And you got to give an account for that soul. So since we need to stay focused on what it is that God has. Now, this is one thing he said. Now, we got a large um, ship with a lot of people. We got 276 souls that's on this boat. And Paul said, if you were listen to me, none of these people would be in danger. But you had a, a mixture of people that was on the boat. Some were um, the owners. Some were workers. Some were prisoners. Some were soldiers. So you got a mixture of people all on that boat. What are you saying, preacher? Well, I'm saying there's a mixture of people you're going to have in your life. Some of them are just heathens. Some of your friends just, just flat out heathens. And then some of them are darso. Some of them may be strangers just coming to know you. So there's a different conglomerate of people that's in your life. But what you need to do is be the same consistent person. In the midst of it all. Because in the crises, some people are going to look to you and your faith will be enough to carry them through. And so in verse number 38, it says, And when they had eaten enough, that when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. Let me say this to you. Now, look at this. Sometimes you gotta have to, you're going to have to get rid of some things in your life. And they may be things of value, very um, high value. Again, he says, listen to what he says, and when they had eaten enough. See, after you have eaten, you cannot waste your life worried about tomorrow when you got a crisis today. You cannot worry about that. The, the saying that goes, if you come into your house and it's a flood, a major flood that's in your house from a broken pipe, what's the first thing you do? Start dipping that water out. No, you don't dip the water out. Because no matter how much you dip out, it's still coming in. The first thing you got to do is cut off the water. And when you cut it off, then you start the process of dipping out, getting the stuff cleaned out. And then you can take things out, do what necessarily needs to be done. See, they had eaten enough. This is what he says. And when they had eaten enough. See, some of you have eaten more than enough. And you keep eating. 
And so it becomes a rot in you. It, it sickens you. You can't eat everything. You're going to have to your body. And I don't want to gross anybody out. But the body has a mechanism of the way it works. You put stuff in. And your body take all of the nutrients that's in that thing out. And then it sends the rest out the waste. And so what you have is so many people keep eating that the body don't have time to properly waste it. And so a lot of stuff that's in you that's killing you. Some of this junk you got to get rid of in your life. You got to push this stuff away from you. Certain people you got to push away from you. God is trying to speak to you. God is trying to have a conversation with you. But you have people in your life that are trying to keep you off balance. The devil used people just like God. And so some people you just got to cut yourself away from. And so after they had eaten enough, you got to, you have enough. Why do you keep hoarding when you have enough? So after they eaten enough, he says they lighten the ship because sometimes the weight of the stuff you're carrying the weight of the stuff you're carrying, um, you got to let it go. You have to let it go. So um, what they did in order to lighten the ship so they can have control of it, the heavier thing is, the harder it is to control it, the lighter it is, the better it is that you control it. So in order to lighten the ship, what they did is they cast out the wheat. They threw it out in the ocean. You may say that's valuable. And yes, it is. But you can get some more wheat. You can't get another you. And some of you want to hold on to a thing. You, I don't want to lose this, but you're going to lose your life. Let it go. Let it go. There are certain things that are very valuable to you. But if somebody stick a gun in your face for that, give that thing up, man. Let them have it. Let them have it. And so that's the natural. But in the spiritual, in the spiritual, what God is saying is if the devil is seen to try to offer you something, give it back. Because there's nothing he gives you that's good. Nothing he gives you. That is good. So what you're going to have to do is trust God every step of the way. And you're going to have to let some things go that are that is a value. A value. Because wheat is very valuable to them. 14 days, they haven't eaten anything. So I'm pretty sure they went in when it was time to eat. But it was plenty of food. And after they had eaten, throw it out. Throw it out. And so that's, where it, where it, that's the way it goes from there. And it says, And when it was day, they knew not the land. But they discovered a certain creek, creek with a shore into the which they were mined that it was possible to thrust the ship, to thrust in the ship. Now, this right here is something you need to really comprehend and understand. Listen at the first part of verse number 39. It says, and when it was day, when it was day, if they're stressing and when it was day, that lets you know it was what? Night. There's going to be some nighttime in your life. And there are certain things you can't do at night that you can do in the day. Or you can't do it as well at night that you do in the day. The word of God says, I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man um, worketh. Remember when you're studying the word, we know the six things that you was doing at all times. Six things. You got to know who's talking, who is he talking to, and what is he talking about. But you also got to know the times, the cultures, and the laws. Now, the times that they had, there was not LED lights back then. So the ship didn't have these LED lights shining everywhere. Okay? So what they're saying, they're just coming out of night. And when you're coming out of night, you're disoriented. When you wake up out of your sleep, you take a moment so you can get your bearings about yourself. So you're looking at it, it says, and when it was day, they knew not the land. That lets you know at night it went somewhere where they were totally unfamiliar with. Sometimes you're going to find, you're going to come to your senses and you're going to find yourself in a place that you know not. You're going to find yourself with some people that you know not. You're going to find yourself doing some things that you knew not. So sometimes, guys, when the night, when you get out of the night, and thank God you come out of the night, some people still in the night, but you came to your senses, or you came out of that circumstance, you came out of that situation, God got you free. Now that you come out of the night and you're in today, you're into a new place, God sometimes puts you with new people. They're not the same people you used to hang out with, a new place. Sometimes God uproots you. I got to take you out of the city that you're in. I got to take you away from the town that you're in. I got to take you out of the state that you're in. I got to remove you from the people that you know. I have to put you in a place that's unfamiliar to you. That's where they were. They were in an unfamiliar place. An unfamiliar place. So they don't came out the night and they was in a land that they knew nothing about. But they discovered a certain creek where 
a certain creek with a shore. So what they did is they began to look and they saw a situation, an opportunity, if you will. Remember, they've been tossed and turned all through the night. Finally, the sky don't gave away. You could see daylight. They was able to focus on getting to a safe place and they don't locked in. They don't walk into that, says a shore, and it was, it says, um, into the witch, they were mine, that if it was possible to thrust in the ship, what they saying is, I'm not worried about this doggone ship or anything else. They don't throw out all of the valuables, food and things of that sort. What they said, man, we don't been out here in this water long enough. Let's just run this thing up on ground. Well, you might tear off the ship. So what? So what? So what? You have to lose that thing so that God can keep your sanity. So what if you lost it? They got to repossess your house so you can keep your sanity. So what if you lost it? God will give you another one. Your car got to be taken back. Whatever it is that have you to the point that where it has you in turmoil and tumult, sometimes you got to run aground on this thing. Get yourself free. Get yourself free. People going to talk about you with it or people going to talk about you without it. You need to get free. And God says, he who the son has set free is free indeed. I have never in my life free indeed. And I have never in my life seen so many people so captivated by other people that they get themselves in debt with people that don't like them, with things they can't afford to try to look like they are this or portray an image of this or that. Oh, this is a sad thing that many Christians do. Why don't you just love what God has already given you? You. You are good enough. And as I said it before, so said I again. If you got to wear a name bag or you got to wear some name brand clothes or you got to drive a name brand car, you got to live in a name brand neighborhood to say you somebody, you just said you nobody. That neighborhood, that car, those clothes or that pocketbook don't make you, baby. You make it. So the thing is, they ought to pay you for wearing it. So the point I'm saying in God, well, the way thing God lay out for you, some things you let these things go. I'm good. I can get those things again. And so that's what they're saying. And I'm looking at this. And now I have been in hell so long, I see an opportunity. I'll run the ship aboard. So you know when a person don't been in the thing long enough. When a person been in the thing long enough, they don't, they don't care. Pretense is gone. But they ain't trying to impress nobody. No. See, when you've been in darkness long enough, you don't, you don't have no help like help. I want nobody to see me screaming help. No, when you have had enough, you say it. Help! When you understand your life is at stake, some of you are still saying help with a falsetto voice. And God is trying to say, I need you to use full voice. For when my people call me, I hear they cry. Some of you have not cried loud enough. That means you're holding back. That means you haven't had enough. And so that's one thing they're saying. So what they did is they realized we got to get this ship and they ran this thing aboard. They ran it aboard, people. They ran it up on a, ran it up on the land for what purpose? So we can make sure this thing can get out. Now look at the situation. It says, and when they had taken up um, the anchors and taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosened the rubber bands and horsed up the Horsed up the mainsail to the wind and made towards shore. So what they did is they looked at this thing. They saw an opening. They knew which way to turn the, um, the if you would, the sails so the wind it could catch the wind. And we finna run this thing aground, baby. And I don't care what it's going to cost me or what it's going to lose. All I know is I'm finna get free. One thing about it, when you will find yourself, if you find yourself in a dangerous situation, you don't care about what you look like. You don't care. You're just trying to get free. I can fix me up later on. And so when they understood what they were looking at, guys, these guys committed their minds. I see an opening. I see some land. This is the closest we're going to get. I'm not worried about trying to pull in pretty. Only thing I'm trying to say, baby, is let's turn the wind and use it to our advantage. Let's run this thing up on land and we can worry about the rest then. And that's what the word of God has right here, guys. And that's what he's telling you. These things, um, you need to lock yourself in. And so you need to um, use what you have in front of you. You got to use what you have in front of you. See, they turned a bad situation into an advantage. Look at what he said here, guys. Remember what was giving them the problem? What was tossing them all around? The wind. But what they did is fix the sail to where that same wind that was beating them 
took them to where they needed to be. That same trap they set up for you is the trap that's going to get you the promotion. That same person that's tur um, uh, turning their back on you is the very back God going to use you to step up on to get to where you need to be the next time. You need to understand that you have to let your enemies, your haters, got to be the ones that catapult you to where God wants you to be. But you got to be willing to let your enemies and your haters go. They can't go with you. It's a little bit too heavy for what God is taking you. You're not going to rise to that, um, that point that God want to take you if you have some dead weight. If you have that dead weight on you. So that's what you have to do. You have to work that plan that's in front of you. That's what they did. They took the sail, turned it where it needed to go, let the wind drive them the way they did, and just rammed it up on, the, um, rammed it up on shore. And listen to what it says. It says, and falling into a place where two seas met and ran the ship aground and and the forepart stuck um, the, the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable and the hither part was broken with the violence of the waves so again you can't worry about what you got to let go in order for you to live so they knew where they was going they aimed this thing so what you had was two um if you will two seas coming together two rivers think of two rivers coming together and what they did is they was coming down and they said we're gonna run it right into the middle we're gonna run this thing right into the middle and that's what they did now the front part of the ship but the speed they was coming in really sunk them in and anchored them in they wasn't going anywhere and if it was me if it was me soon as that thing hit the land I'm jumping off the ship. I can do it from here. It's, and that's what they did. But they wasn't quite, guys, right there, um, right there on the shore. But they was on a part of land to where they could then make some things begin to work this thing. They were still out there a bit in the ocean, but they was not all the way on land. It's not like running up on the beach shore. No, they was off, still off a little bit. The mainland, they wasn't quite there, but they was in a much safer place. They was in a much safer place. And so that's what he was saying. But the back part of it, because of the, the violence of the waves, the wind going back and forth, it completely took off the half part of the ship. Completely took it out. So now we only, it is no more good anyway. See, some people, there's no more good for you to be hanging with. You need to leave them alone. Some places, sometimes God just got to fire you from a job. The job is holding you back. Don't you understand what God is saying? I promoted you to do better. I promoted you to do greater but you're sitting here with this nickel and dime thing where God says, I put in you a business. I have given you a business idea of, I've given you a blueprint and you still depending on the job. So sometimes God says, well, I'm going to fire you. It ain't that you did nothing wrong. They did me wrong and fired me. No, they did you a favor. They did you a favor. And that's what God is saying. So what they're doing is, guys, you're looking at it, the front part, anchored down to where they was at. The back part was completely tore off. Your life can be in a chaos. Half of it is there. Half of it is gone. But what you need to learn to do is trust and love the Lord in the midst of it all, knowing that God have you. How do you know God have you? Because Paul was on the ship and he has already given him the word. Y'all, we're good. We're good. Yeah, we're going to lose the ship and we're going to lose everything on it. But we're good. Uh, I'll take that. I'll take that. There are certain things you can put yourself in. You'll find out how vulnerable you really are. My wife and I, we took a, uh, a flight. We was on a plane. And, and you realize when you weigh up in the air like that, um, you really just vulnerable. It's nothing you can do. I, I still don't understand the plane. I can actually feel them people hitting brakes in midair. How is this big thing staying up in the sky? I don't know how they're doing it, but just keep doing it until we get on the ground. So my point would be in this old situation. You were there in this situation and the front part tore off, the back part of my Front part ankle in, the back part toe off. Sometimes you're going to lose some things behind you. It's okay. You got to keep looking looking ahead. And so that's what they was doing there, guys. So, okay. Now, here's the part here. It says, now the ship, remember, is at a wreck. Look at this right here in verse number 42. And the soldiers, and the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. See, the soldiers had a job, and their job was to deliver, to deliver these prisoners. Now, there was a law that Rome had. If the prisoner got away, you had to take the prisoners, um, you had to take their punishment. So if the prisoner had a death penalty, a death sentence, you got to take that. That made sure um, prisoners weren't getting away. Roman soldiers did not mess around. 
They did their job. But look at verse number 42. It says, and the soldier's counsel was to kill the prisoners. Now, that's what it was. Who was the counsel from? That was their law. Their law was in that situation. The prison, you kept, that's why we read when Paul was in prison many times. And remember back in Acts, we was reading back in, and Paul was in prison and, and they was there and the, and the angel opened the prison gates and the soldier woke up and seen that the prisoners were going to kill himself. And Paul said, don't kill yourself. We all are here. Because he understood what the rules were. And so that's what he's saying. They understood the council got these prisoners. And so the council was, anytime there's a crisis, you kill all the prisoners. Kill the prisoners. So that's what the council was, to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should have, should swim, or swim out and escape. So they're saying, we don't want none of them to escape. We will kill every last one of these prisoners that we have to. Now, here is the thing. You can't worry about control you don't have. They were prisoners. Paul did nothing, but still he was a prisoner. So therefore, whatever the punishment the prisoners had, Paul had to be subject to the punishment. Now, you are subject to the law or subject to the authority of the person over you or you subjected to. But I have good news for you, saints. I have good news for you. Look at the good news in verse number 43. It says, but the centurion willing to save Paul kept uh, kept them from their uh, kept them from their purpose and commanded that that. That commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to the land. Now, the prisoners had their orders. Here is your issue. Their supervisor said, no, 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 no. Discard those orders. Because the supervisor had seen God move in Paul and knew that this was an innocent man. So the supervisor was subject to the higher power, which is God. I don't care what your job say they ain't going to give you. I don't care what people say you're not going to receive. When God said it's for you, it's for you. When God says you're delivered out of it, you're delivered out of it. When God says enough, it's enough. So what you're going to have to do is trust God every step of the way, believe God's word, and know that God have you. And so even though the law had been laid down what they're supposed to do, a higher authority intervened and said, no, that's not what you're going to do. We're going to flip the script, and I'm willing to take the responsibility of anything that go down. This centurion is saying, I know it's on me, not the soldiers. I will tell them they was going to do their job. I commanded them to stop. And so by commanding them to stop, they did their job. It's on me. It's on me. And we close verse number 30, um, verse um, chapter 27 with verse number 44. The word says, in the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship, and some, and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Just that God promised them through Paul. Remember what he said, guys? Just quickly going back and touching this as we close. Look, go back to verse number 21. Look at what Paul said. This is what Paul told them. In verse number... Yeah. Yeah, verse number 21. Look at what Paul said. I'm going to read a little to you and this is where we'll close. Paul says, But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosened from Crete, and have gained this harm and loss. And now I exalt you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of the, the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Just because of your righteousness, you will bring other people in. And then he says in verse number 25, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall, it shall be even as it was told me. Do you have the confidence to look at a person in a crisis and be able to give them a word from God? Do you have a relationship with God that you have the confidence that regardless of what it looks like, that when God speaks to you, you can go speak with authority to say that shall not be. Do you have that confidence of where people can look at you and even 
when all the odds say no, they know you have a relationship with God. And so they say, I'll go with you, even though it looks bleak. Saints, we all have that opportunity to have that relationship with God. We just have to be willing to give him his time. If something else is in you, that's because you're not full of the word. Now, how do you get full of the word? What we're doing now, Bible study, studying the word of God, meditating on the word of God, spending some time with God. Sometimes you just need to get up in the middle of the night, get to a place, um, a quiet place. Don't wake up your significant other um, and just be able to sit and meditate and talk to God and listen to you. Guys, praying is you talking to God. Meditating is God talking to you. It's time for us to have the conversation because the world is waiting on us. People are in darkness and they are shipwrecked and waiting for us believers to be an example. Let's get about the Father's business. I know you can do it. I believe in you. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you and honor you for this opportunity you have given me once again to come before the throne of grace. Oh, Father, I pray and plead the blood of Jesus that you bless the saints, that the word they have received tonight will be beneficial for them. Oh, Father, bless them, Lord, that they may be able to take this word and be able to use it for your glory. To those ears, Lord, that have not heard the gospel before, Lord, I pray that it was simple enough for them to understand it and that they're willing to give their hand or give their try at trusting you, Lord. Give them that courage and give them that little faith that they may be able to just take a baby step. But let us as believers, help us, Lord God, to leap according to your will in your law, your word, in your way. We thank you, Lord, for blessing the word. I pray that it hit its target. And I believe by faith, Lord, that you are one that will honor us for doing that which you have called us to do. I ask this prayer, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let me ask, is there any of you out here, you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and would like to know him as your Lord and Savior? I have good news for you. I can walk you through God's plan for the salvation of all mankind. Come and walk with me. But before we take another step, let me ask to that person that once knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You was on fire. You honored him in all that you did. But the devil over time talked it out of you. You gave it up. You walked away. And now you have come to your senses. You have come out of the darkness into the day. And you said, let me get this thing back right with Christ. If you're that person, come and hold a hand with me with the person that never knew Jesus. And together, let's walk into salvation. Just repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity that you have put before me. I thank you for this door that you have opened for me. And I just want to tell you, Lord, I appreciate you being patient with me to this point. Now, Lord, I want to take full advantage of this opportunity by walking through this door. I want to repent of the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. I right now, of my own free will, confess that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. And I now ask Jesus to sit on the throne of my heart. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. I believe by faith that you have honored this request. For I confess Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. Now, if you will put that in the comment section, we just want to celebrate with you. You may even have a question. What do I do now that I've given my life to Christ? I mean, do I supposed to feel something? Do I supposed to do something? No, you get in a good Bible-believing church and you just keep taking the word in as you grow. Now, you may say, I'm not sure what a Bible, good Bible-believing church is. Is. I've seen some crazy churches. Well, just stay here with us then until God grows you till you're strong enough to where you're able to get out and be able to be a part of a body of believers. You may say, okay, what does it take for me to be a part of Firm Foundation? I believe in the ministry. I believe in the doctrine. It seems to be solid according to God's word. Well, we ask you two things. One, do you believe that the Bible is the true word of God? 
through and through. You say, yes, I believe that. Okay, my sex, second question is this. Are you willing to obey the rules and the regulation, meaning the teachings that we give, so as long as they line up with the word of God? You say, uh, yeah, I can do that. Well, we say, welcome to Firm Foundation, a ministry that loves people right where they are and want to just get them to where Christ wants them to be. We believe in you. We trust you. We love you. You may say, well, I'm glad. Now, what I want to do is I want to come visit you guys. Where are you located? We're located at 1851 Highway 66 South in the city of Kernersville in the state of North Carolina. Now, you may say, okay, then I want to come visit you guys. I want to be able to come visit you guys and sit down with you guys. Well, we're there, guys, every um, Sunday mornings at actually 9 a.m. where we have Christian education and then 10 a.m. for Sunday morning worship. You will say, okay, then I want to be there. But what I want to do is I want to um, take the ministry and support it financially. How can I support you guys financially? Well, there's a QR code that you are able to give. Um, look at right there where you can give and that you can follow that QR code. One and two, you can um, send a snail mail for our foundation. Um, located in Kernersville, North Carolina, address 1851, Highway 66 South. I assure you, every dime you send will be used every bit for the kingdom of God and his purposes. No shady business. We thank God for you. We believe God um, for you. And we just believe that one day we'll be able to see your face to give you a firm handshake or a big hug. We just a shaky, handy, huggy type of people. That's just who we are. So we got a lot of saints that's growing. God is changing them from where they were to where he wants them to be. Some is almost there. Some is right in the process. Some is in the beginning stages. So while God is doing the work and changing people, why don't you come and be a part of the ministry where God can change you with us? We love you guys. Look forward to joining you right here on this page, Wednesday nights, 7 p.m. or on, on this channel, um, Sunday mornings, 9, um, 10 a.m. Be blessed in Jesus' name.